The powers that be in propaganda effort have been attempting to convince humanity that we are evolved of apes and that our existence is largely based upon chaos-driven luck, random, perchance happening, and that there is no special significance to the covenant humanity shares with Creator and creation. Distance perfectly extent from solar center, they say the only thing special about humanity is that we happen to inhabit a planet which due to our orbital revolution within the Goldilocks zone makes us benefactors of impossible odds, the ramification of which, as chance would have it, grants Earth the ability to house the multiplicity of life here now as we've come to know it. And that such scenario can, according to godless atheistic professionals from countless background, all backed by Ph.D. degrees, as worthless as the Illuminati currency which affords them status to levy such opinionated disclosure, is that creation evolved without need or direction from any grand designer, and that we are alone when it comes to salvaging world from the archonic parasites parading as ancient alien. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Fallen Angels TV, and today is the third uh, in a series that I've been doing on the geocentric earth and um, the discussion that has been taking place for weeks now on fallenangels.tv, our truth network, the website www.fallenangels.tv, that if you are not a member of the network, um, we invite you to come and share fellowship with us to join the conversation and uh, find easy access to a tool uh, as website which grants you the ability to upload information in many different facets and aspects, all in really easy capacity, and that one does not have to learn HTML or any kind of computer language or um, anything of that nature in order to be able to to do so. That it's very simple. Uh, and the network is designed in such a way that all you have to do is copy paste the um, the the web um, as far as the address, the web address or the you know the HTTP, that you can right-click on that, copy it, and just paste that into the link if you're trying to upload a video, or that you can just copy-paste in in a blog form, uh, and it will convert all the HTML for you very simply, you know, linking all the video or pictures or anything of, of that nature um, in trying to, to post a blog um, and that there's many different groups you can join for discussion and um, to talk about some of the things that have piqued our interest uh, as far as, you know, um, a community, really a, a family, and that the people that are there are very wise in their research and very well studied in um, many, many facets of the esoteric expanse of conspiratorial, biblical, mythological, ancient mysteries. I mean, you name it, it is covered. And, um, and there's a lot of very wise and pertinent questions asked and 
answers provided from not just myself but many of the others that are uh, that frequent the site and that visit it and and so I do invite you to come and and share dialogue with us if you have not already um, joined the the site and I thank those of you that have taken the time to join me this today uh, as you know if you if you're not um, connected to my Facebook updates and posts um, I do release the you know all the prior uh, links and uh, descriptions of the shows that I'm going to do and today I'm only again going to be on an hour last week I had shortened the show to an hour because I was supposed to join Wayne on the at on the street dot com well it's a different web address because he's affiliated with a huge organization of radio networks and they actually broadcast on AM and FM um dial you know the different shows and so but his producer wasn't able to make it and so they postponed to this week and so I'm going to only be on for this week for an hour and then I'll do a couple things in between show and then I'll be back 7 to 9 p.m. on his particular show and if you go to Facebook uh, Zen Garcia you'll find the details and I did post a link to his show and if you want to join me for for that, um, you know that show and and listen to it live. I'll try to find an archive for it and post it on my YouTube, convert it into a, a video and upload it on my YouTube channel under Endeavor Freedom. And so, um, and I'll link that to uh, you know a Facebook post as well. But today I thought I would talk about some of the biblical aspects as far as um the different quotes and scriptures that i believe are defining what i've come to know as the geocentric earth and the way that is laid out and um and that the description of the world is one of what we are talking about today and what we've been talking about over the course of the past few weeks now. And I just want to reiterate and state this again that, um, you know, because a lot of people, especially if you're still new to the discussion and you haven't really looked into it in any relevant way, that myself included, that most of us, I totally believe this to be a topic unworthy of spending any amount of time in researching that it was just so far um, far off the edges as far as of any basis of truth that, you know, why even bother wasting any kind of time? And so, um, and so, even with many of my listeners and even some of my closest friends and confidants um, telling me over and over and kind of, you know, just almost begging me to give it an open-minded look and take it as possibility without any bias or any uh, speculation, uh, which was you know, oriented in any such way that uh, I have to admit that once I did so and I started to look at some videos which were very, um, very profound and logical and well um well presented that I certainly questions went up in my mind and I was suddenly uncertain to why it is that I had at that time believed in a round spherical earth. And I only did so because of the indoctrination 
the assimilation of, as I put it in poem, of, you know, innocent child mind slate, and that as tabula rasa are being born into the, the matrix that we are indoctrinated, um, inherently we assimilate information and foundational beliefs which create what is our reality and that many of us never challenge the assumptions that we take in and we never look twice at what we consider to be um you know uh things that why would we give them a second thought you know things that just absolutely made sense and you know our our all of the teachers in the elementary school and uh grade school they have globes on their desk and all the uh, maps of the world are based on you know our living on a globe and and, and these kind of things never even crossed my mind again as to you know whether they were true or not uh and certainly the scientists had already established ever since um you know copernicus and um kepler and all those uh freemasonic as it's come to be known now all these freemasonic scientists um and these secret society cliques uh they determined for us and we didn't have to look into it in any way that certainly the earth was spherical and that we were uh, spinning around the sun at a a, a very fast rate and that um, that the spin was unnoticeable because we were moving with the earth and that um that's just the way that it is, and that even though we couldn't see any kind of curvature, um, that according to the mathematics, it certainly is, is you know built into the the way that the science figure out uh, you know spherical trigonometry and all of that, um, and, and so I never even. Yeah, and I know that many of you are in similar um, similar accord as far as having been part of that group. Uh, recently, one of my friends on Facebook posted a picture of this guy wearing a huge tinfoil hat that he had made a comment underneath, putting a a, a, a arrow, a hyphen, and several dashed lines pointing toward my picture and I was a proud member of the Tinsel Hat Wing Society, Tinsel Hat Society. Uh, and that's the way that it is because even though many of my friends um, haven't looked in it, into it and just absolutely assume that, you know, the that we live on a globe on a round earth and that there's no basis to even begin to to research it. They tell me that I'm, you know, um, even with the conspiratorial theories and all the things that I cover, as far as the Nakash, the presence of the uh, the dragon-like beings, the Cain lineage, and uh, all the strange uh, mythological um, things that I talk about, the, you know, that I'm in some way putting uh, ruining my credibility which you know I it uh whatever that means um and so this topic is so taboo even in the world of conspiracy realists that most don't want to look into it and don't believe that there's a basis to to do so but I'm hoping that those of you that have seen that I have given this topic some serious regard uh, that you have done so also and that in doing so you have been brought to similar revelation as to 
um, is there anything to this? And if there is, and you are finding questions and cracks in what you thought was your argument and your belief for living on a, a globe and are you know spinning at six seven thousand miles an hour around the sun uh, and that the equator and the center of the earth as mass is also spinning at a, a rate of a thousand miles an hour complete one revolution every day um if this these beliefs have suddenly started to, to crack and that there's you know no no longer that absolute certainty um are you like myself finding more evidence for a geometric earth and having because all of us base our real true foundational beliefs on the Bible and looking into what the Bible says and doing some simple searches um, are myself finding more support biblical support for their are living on a flat earth or a flat earth plane and my hope is that you are like myself um, finding uh, similar and being led to similar revelation. A uh, question from Holly B in the chat room If the world is flat, is there a lip around the edge? What happens to the water and why does it stay in the ocean and not uh, waterfall off the edge? Uh, that's a very good question, and it's one that I asked myself when I began to look into this. And before I get to that, um, w another one of the reasons why I believe that the Earth is flat, other than you know when, when we stare at out at the oceans, or if you um, like, if you get into a, a, a very tall building and overlook like even Chicago and you overlook um, the lake there, that you don't see any curvature and that um, it the horizon is perfectly flat. Well, another reason why I believe that we live on a flat earth is because when you look at the way that water is as far as its nature, that whether you're pouring it or however you try to contain it or you try to hold it back with dam or anything of that nature that water will always try to reach the lowest point and that in reaching that lowest point it will start to pull up and be flat in its um you know in in its however in its settling and so uh, getting back to the question as to the edge and what happens to the water, according to what flat earth, earthers um, believe and have come to know, is that the earth as a circle and the Isaiah chapter 40, the verse there, which so many um read to support that we live on a globe that it says which I'll read it but anyways that this circle of the earth is contained by a, a huge ice wall and that the ends of the world which are spoken about so many times in scripture scripture and you can go and keyword search like if you go to some of the KGB websites it allow you to keyword search certain things that if you search ends you'll find so many scriptures which are linked to uh the ends of the earth um and that you know it's my belief that this is what it's speaking about the ends of the earth as speaking about this particular ice wall that is 
what on a globe is believed to be Antarctica. And that not to say that there isn't some land, you know, that Antarctica isn't itself more than just this ice wall, but the extremes or the extremities of what we see on the globe as Antarctica or the South Pole is this particular ice wall and that it contains the uh, all the waters of the oceans and the rivers, the, the foundations of the deep, and that it does not allow um, for the water to just roll off of the edge or off of the side and stream off into nothingness if indeed that's what is on the other side of the ice wall. And because of the governments of the world and the Antarctic Treaty not allowing um, exploration or corporations or people to go past this particular point, we do not know as a, a collective what indeed is beyond that point and whether it you know, at the uh, uh, the other side of the ice wall, if there's just nothingness, or if the ice wall is the um, continues on into infinity in all directions, or if there are other, you know, that there are it's a wall between a separation of a, you know, another world or or what we have no idea, but this is the boundary. Just as in that movie, Dark City, and if those of you have who have not seen this particular movie, Dark City, um, the premise of it is that the people that are contained by the overseers and not allowed to go beyond a certain point, even like with the you know the Truman show, that particular movie with Jim Carrey, um, that all of the people and all of what was really going on was contained within the boundaries of what was known and what was allowed to be explored. And in Dark City, uh, the one of the individuals that discovers that, you know, that the overseers were indeed trying to keep all of the people of the city contained within this, uh, this circle, um, he started the premises that he started to question uh whether this was it or if there was something beyond and also in the Truman show we know that he actually opens a door and goes on to another portion that was not allowed to be explored um even the um the i believe it's the maze runners um that particular movie if i'm correct uh, the individual the uh, individual that was able to escape he made it to a certain uh, point and, and then discovered a, a house if that's the right movie but anyways there's been several hollywood features that have um this particular flat earth and you know the the questions associated with it as the premise of their movies. And so we're going to get into some of the some of the scriptures. Um another question from the chat room. Uh Cersei says on a flat earth you wouldn't have water at the north and south poles it would pool in the center. And Holly says again, so the ice wall stops the water, and yes. Okay, and Holly B. also says uh, she looks over the edge, and certainly if they want to confirm to us that Antarctica as a continent is, um, you know, the South Pole, why don't they allow the exploration? And why is it that with all of the other continents of the world, nations competing and fighting over them to to gain access to their natural resources, 
why is it that all of the nations of the world have an agreement that w- um, that refutes any exploration or any kind of ownership of Antarctica as a continent or any portion of it? Uh, it doesn't make sense, especially in this world where we know that the Illuminati as uh, globalists, transnationalists, corporatists that utilize uh, the creation of money and utilize their power, and, you know, their monetary um, subjugations of nations as far as debt um, to to pilfer and to increase their control and their power and the force on world government. Why is it that they have put off limits Antarctica, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, Wataru says, then I wonder if there is credibility to the hollow earth. Uh, how does the flat earth factor in? Um, it's my opinion that that it, it's still, that there is still um, the hollow earth, but not in regards to the South Pole. That um, the hollow earth that they're you know, is several portals, not just at the North Pole. And if indeed the explorations and the account of Admiral Byrd are true, it's said that he discovered this in the, you know, the North Pole. And also that the Smoky God, which is a basis of a a story of a Icelandic fisherman, uh, and according to him, him and his son had spent time with the giants that lived in the interior of the earth that um that and that they had very high technology that they also located and discovered a portal in you know at the north pole which would be the center of the flat or geocentric earth and also in the there's a passage from the Cave of Treasures that many of you have heard me read where I speak about how it was that Alexander had uh, locked away uh, many tribes of giants in what was the the hollow earth and that this also this portal was located in the you know at the polar north and that um, according to the Cave of Treasures, they would be released with the Joel to the Locust Army and with the uh, release of or the return of the Nephilim, which are the fallen angels and not their giant children. Um, but that um, that all of that has connections, that the Locust Army has connections with the release of their hybrid children, the the giants and so um and and that particular quote is also part of some of the source reference that i put out in my fourth book lucifer father of cain so those of you that have that book you can find that quote in there okay uh cersei says several nations claim ownership of portions of Antarctica, yes, and that's true. And as I said earlier, Antarctica still has land that before you reach the ice wall, there is still a lot of land prior, and that this is what we have come to know as Antarctica. And so there's still continental land at the southern or the ends or the extremities of what is the flat earth, but the, those portions which extend out or come near to what is the um, the ice wall, which is the ends of the earth, no corporations and no nations are allowed beyond or to that point. Um, demolishing strongholds at If the earth is flat, where does the sun and moon go when they vanish on the horizon? Uh, That's a really good question and one that I asked myself. 
um, according to the flat Earth plane, and if you look at it, um, the sun and the moon never actually go over a horizon. The sun and the moon are not as big as we think they are, and the sun, when it's shining on a portion of what is the huge circle of the flat earth plane, that the shadow from um, from that uh, the portion of the earth that is in shadow and does not receive illumination from the the sun being overhead or over that portion of the earth, that the shadow that rotates and revolves with the sun, uh, opposite of the sun, that once the shadow reaches wherever you are, this is what appears as sunrise and also sunset, but that the sun actually never disappears or vanishes over um, the opposite side of the earth or what we think of as the other side of a globe or spherical earth. And so I do invite, there's many videos on, on the website, fallenangels.tv, which confirms this and explains it in a great way. And that even um, many of the very ancient accounts, like, you know, the, the Hindu uh, or those... Um, from India, they have very ancient models, uh, um, you know, accounts from their pagan deities, their various, um, what they consider to be pagan gods. Uh, and it also verifies uh, and describes the earth um, as a flat earth plane as being the, uh, you know, the foundation and that above um, is where all of the sun, the moon, and the planets, and the stars. Uh, and this is also, if you look at the, the way that all of the constellations move in a circle around the North Star Polaris, the sun and the moon are also a part of that clockwork movement. They move in the same kind of way. And so all of this is unfolding um, in a counterclockwise motion, and it is what establishes night and day and, you know, the, the calendar and the dating of, um, of all of these things. And so I'm trying to keep up with uh, all of the questions from chat. But I want to go ahead and before I answer any more questions, I want to read some of what we can find in Scripture. Uh, in I, Isaiah 40, this is the passage most people refer to when they speak of our living on a spherical or planetary um, body and not a flat earth plane. It says, Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning, have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Now, when you look up circle, um, just to, to prove something as, as, as well, that when you look up the word that is being used there as circle, you get... Um, Um, looking for it. Uh, the word. I had this all laid out, but uh, I believe it's a uh, chug, if I can remember correctly. I think I closed that. Uh, anyways, I I'll go into the um, the definitions as far as strongs later because that particular I did close out that that particular 
But anyways, it talks about circle, and there's a difference between circle and another word that means ball, uh, and that the circle is in in this particular passage, this particular scripture, is in reference to a circle as it would be laid out on the ground, and that the flat earth, the geocentric earth, is a huge circle, much as it is depicted in the United Nations flag or the Azimuthal um, map, with the you know the polar north being the very center, and that the polar north also is in alignment to Polaris, and that the Earth being stationary and being in this huge you know, in the as a huge circle, much like a clock's face, that the sun and the moon and all the planets and the uh, celestial, um, like the constellations that spin in a circle around Polaris, that all of that moves in the same kind of way as, you know, like um, around a, a circle, like it would be a, a huge clock clock's face. So anyways, let me read the this particular scripture. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heaven as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. And so if you look at the the description of the earth and the heavens as being like a tent, so you have the floor of the tent being the circle of the earth and then the stars and the firmament and the you know the heavens as a curtain being spread out over like the you know the top of a tent over what would be the circle of the earth which is in my opinion a perfect description of the way that the earth is laid out in that it's a flat plane. Um, when you look up, and uh, I wish I would have had more time. I'll I'll actually do another show next week because I've got many scriptures that I want to go into which talk about uh, the flat Earth. In my opinion, I want to read a few more for y'all, just so that I can give you some of these, and you can. Again, as I said, keyword search for yourself um, how how the Bible supports this. And the book of Enoch also, which I'll go into that in a whole separate show, just the way that it is talked about and laid out descriptively in the book of Enoch. Because you can base, you, you know, I can do a whole show just on that topic itself. Uh, Job 28. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heaven, to make the weight for the winds, and weigheth the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then did he see it, and declare it. He prepared it, yea, and searched it out. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom and depart from evil is understanding. Uh, talking about the ends of the earth, which in my opinion, when it speaks about the ends of the earth, it's talking about the, because uh, there's better description in the book of Enoch, and we'll get to that at some point. Um, I'm kind of rushing because I know I'm going to run out of time. I'll get back to the questions in the chat room in just a minute. Job 37 he directeth it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. That the ends of the earth, again, are speaking about the ice wall, which makes up the boundary that the elites won't let us fly past or observe. Uh, and who knows what is beyond that point. All right. Just a couple more. Proverbs 8. 
The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. This, of course, is speaking of Christ. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the fountain foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men." And we know that Christ is the Father and that together uh, they are the creator of all things. One more and then I'll get to some of the questions in the chat room. Job 38. And then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and he said, Who is it that darketh, darkeneth the counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Which, that's a fantastic question. Um, what is the foundation fastened upon? Only God knows. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut up the sea with doors? When it brake forth as if it had issued out of the womb. When I made the cloud the garment thereof and thick darkness a swaddling band for it. And break up for it my decreed place. And set bars and doors. And said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further. And here shall thy pride, proud waves be stayed. A little bit more. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know his place, that it may take hold of the ends of the earth? Again, the ends of the earth. That the wicked might be shaken out of it? All right, I'm not going to read the rest of that. But, you know, Job 38 is a very profound introspection on how the earth was laid out um, and established by the Most High God. Uh, one other thing here real quick. Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who coverest thyself with light as with a garment who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire, who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment, the waters stood about above the mountains, and at thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. They go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. And so, um, you know, the bounds, uh, in my opinion, again, that is the ice wall, the ends of the earth, and that nothing can breach or go past that point. All right, let me go ahead and check the chat room and some of the discussion and see. Uh, there's a lot being talked about. What about eclipses? Uh, perfect, great question. Link BS. What about 
eclipses and what about the space station? Uh, do you think all those involved are lying? People live there for months at a time. All right, really pertinent and really great questions. First, what about the eclipses? Okay, according to the the way that the um, the sun and the moon have been established, they are of the same size, which you can see that when eclipses happen, and that the sun is not 93 mile, million miles away, and it's not larger than the moon, that it gives a great amount of light, but that it, it is not bigger in circumference, and that they are the same size, so that when they overlap one another um, in their cycle of spinning, because the the moon has a 28-day cycle uh, as far as a revolution um, uh, uh, around a circuit around the Earth, and that the sun completes one of these circuits every day. Uh, in a 24-hour period, it will complete a full circuit around the the circle of the Earth which is the flat earth plane. But sometimes they will cross over one another and that depending on which one is higher than the other, you have either a solar or a lunar eclipse. And so that is what creates eclipses. Um, and one other thing before I answer this other question as far as the ISS station uh, one of the things that also made me question as far as the um, you know the earth rotating around I mean the the earth spinning around the the sun and also completing a full revolution in one day is because at certain points um, of the year when the when the sun is at its highest or or its lowest depending on whether it's uh, moving towards the Tropic of Cancer or the Tropic of Capricorn, that the you can see the sun for 24 hours a day and that it never sets below the horizon. And that certain very high um, points as far as close to the North Pole or at very um, close you know, the very extremes close to the Antarctic or Antarctica or the ice wall that you can you can see this phenomena occur and that the sun never sets. And if we are indeed on a planet that is spinning and that according to the ecliptic tilts, you know, in its spin then that would not be possible. There's no way for us to be able to look at the sun for longer than a 24-hour period, that at some point uh, the shadow or of what would be night would cover uh, us no matter we, where we are on the globe. And so that was another thing that made me realize that we are not on a planet uh of you know a spherical planet all right as far as the um gosh there's so many questions and i apologize try to get to what i can and i'll save these and i'll you know have some more answers for y'all next week when i and i'll do a longer show um i'm only rushing because i have that other show as far as the iss space station and this includes satellites it's my opinion that they don't exist and that what we see as you know the space station and so-called um video of interaction between the earth and the the people that are on the space station is that they are much like the moon landings um that they are a staging a setup and like a film they are um basically contriving and pulling off uh and fooling us and get like hollywood they are creating a an illusion to propagate that a, a space station exists or even that satellites exist 
Um, and it's the reason I say this is because you can Google search this. If you look up the the temperature of the thermosphere, that supposedly it is at 2,000 degrees Celsius, and that um, any you know, and this is where they say that satellites are orbiting uh, is within the thermosphere or even higher, and that we know that according to what they say. Satellites are built of very lightweight material, and they are done so in order for them to stay in orbit um, and continuously falling around what is the globe of the Earth. And that most of them are, you know, built and layered in gold so that um, the radiation would refract the sun's rays and that portion of the light spectrum, which would damage the sensitive um, solar panels because all of the uh, so-called satellites are, and even the ISS space station, uh, it utilizes solar panels in order to create energy for it to, you know, to harness uh, the sun's energies to create energy to do all the things that it's do, that they do, and that they're also created of carbon fiber and things of that nature. Well, if they were truly in orbit in the thermosphere, uh, they would melt. And all of that that is supposedly made up, making up these satellites would disintegrate and would be wiped out by the heat, uh, the temperature. And, um, and also, if they're moving at the rate that they are supposedly moving at, uh, that they would burn up much like um, an, a meteor fragment when it hits the atmosphere of the Earth. And so look at what they claim the satellites and also the ISS space station and the Hubble telescope. Look at what they claim that these things are made of, and you'll realize that there's no way, according to what the temperature of the thermosphere is supposed to be, that any of these things could exist, and also that um, the you know the illusion that they are utilizing to create weightlessness um, uh, in this so-called so international space station that often you'll see within the video um, or the you know the uh, what they show you'll see bubbles rising up. And it's many people's uh, belief that the footage from the space station, uh, that they are doing these spacewalks underwater, and that's why you see these bubbles rising up, and that they even talk about these training, uh, the, the training that these astronauts undergo is in the world's largest pool, which NASA owns and that they utilize Oh my gosh, we're already out of time. Um, and so look that up for yourself and you'll realize that um, the you know the ISS space station, the Hubble telescope and satellites are non-existence and there's no way that they could exist within the thermosphere. Um, I'll pick it up next week. I will share your comments and answer more of your questions. Um, I appreciate all the dialogue, and also, also I'll do more shows where I can bring forth more scripture to show to you that what is being talked about within the scripture and within the Bible uh, is absolutely, in my opinion, giving us a basis and for the flat earth and a geocentric earth, and that this is biblical truth. And think about it's only been the last 500 years that people have questioned or, or believed in a heliocentric earth when most people used to believe in what the Bible says. And for thousands of years, they believed in a geocentric earth, which, again, is just further confirmation in my mind that um, the people of the past, they absolutely knew that we lived on a flat earth plane uh, and that the universe uh, was geocentric. God bless all. Good night.